uh, well, I was going to say winter, but um, I'd say late autumn has finally arrived, even though it's, what is it today? It's the something of November. Um, I noticed on the weather last night that the temperature was going to drop and be three centigrade this morning. And um, we hadn't had the wood burner alight. We've not really been lighting it. We, we had a fire a couple of days ago and we've not repeated that. So that hadn't been alight. We would um, lit the gas fire late in the evening just um, to warm the room up. Um, <clears throat> so I came out and closed all the shutters and bought the two um, tall plants with the small red flowers on in um, because they're not going to uh, be okay out here in the cold. Bought them in. They're in the kitchen. I need to put them in the greenhouse. Um, closed all the shutters. And when I got up this morning and came down, I don't know what time, about half seven, quarter to eight, it was three centigrade. So the forecast was right. What intrigued me was that one of the sensors is out in front in the um in the mixed hedging you know near the gate and that's the one that tells you the temperature the, the three temperature but the temperature i got a temperature gauge on the back door the double doors at the back and the shutters were closed and that was showing nine and i said to mark that's uh, that's a six degree difference in temperatures and is that just created by having the shutters closed um we've never really noticed before because by the time we close the shutters we've normally got the wood burner on so you can't tell how much of that extra temperature is due to the warmth from the room but the room hadn't had a wood burner burning in it and the gas fire obviously went off overnight so that's a big difference so I think it's I think it was noticeable for Mark because I often sort of say we should close the shutters he said but we've got double glazing but I think it makes a big difference so I'm pleased I closed them my my window shutters are still closed in fact all of the the shutters are closed apart from marks the back door and this door over my shoulder which is our main in and out door um <clears throat> we've been quite busy well for for us um i um packed another box of things to go away for when we get the ceilings done we haven't heard any more about that and i'm just thinking that our the guy that has been uh, that has been here twice now, um, it's possible that you know kids are on half term and they're doing something, so we won't start um, hassling again till Monday. Um, so I don't know when that's going to happen, but I just feel that I have to pace myself. So I packed a box of the stuff from the the shelves on the dresser. Um, so the dresser looks really empty, but but we, you know, nobody comes, nobody comes round. We don't really, I don't have visitors, used to. I used to do a lot of entertaining. I used to cook meals and um, and invite people over for meals and, and all of that stopped when I got PMR. And um, now I have to really be quite confident I can cope with what I'm offering. And, and I rarely offer a meal to anybody because uh, I can't tell from day to day how uh, how well I'm going to be. Um, we're going to eat with our friends in um, about 20 minutes from us, uh, the friends that we swapped with back in 2005 before we came here, before we lived here. Um, <clears throat> we're eating with them tomorrow. We've not seen them since before Covid and I think um, the gap just gets bigger and bigger you know we had lockdowns and then there wasn't a lockdown then there was another lockdown and, and you know stuff like that happened they've got a 16 year old um, and I think they're busy they're working they're both working we're not and the gap gets bigger and bigger and um, and eventually I sat with Mark um, when we were eating at the Gaston I'm gonna move that now when we were eating at Le Gaston the other night and I said it would be really nice to um, eat here, you know, meet JP and Gail here and eat here. So I messaged Gail and um, she said, yeah, that, let me talk to JP. And um, and they said, come over. Do you want to come over Sunday? He's he's making coque vin. Um, I don't like coque vin. But anyway, <laughs> we're going over there. I mean, we... Uh, we always used to eat over there, but I was always able to reciprocate and I feel a bit um, 
I felt a bit reluctant when she said come over and eat here because I know that I can't reciprocate in the way that I used to um, but anyway it'll be really nice it'll be a whole afternoon Sunday afternoon um, and um, I remember going we were at um, her mum and dad's one Sunday um, where I first had um, poulet au normand oh, it's really yummy that's um, chicken thighs cooked with apple in cider I think or and calvados or yeah au normand um, <clears throat> and um, Gail and her mum said well we'll go for a walk oh and they walked and they walked and they walked and I that was just before I got PMR it was it was excruciating <laughs> and they were really shocked you know there was uh, Marie Claude is is uh, probably 10 years my senior um, and they were just shocked that I couldn't you know that I was struggling and um, I think I would have been struggling if I hadn't have been ill anyway it, it makes no difference but it was just too far um, so I will I will uh, decline if a walk is involved tomorrow because I won't be able to do it um, so yeah I packed up the box mark um, we've got a big a big how big is it I suppose it's the same size as a as a downstairs toilet a normal you know normal downstairs toilet so it's a, a, probably a bit wider than a downstairs toilet room would be um, but and probably a bit deeper but around about that size but it's where the boiler used to be and uh, the gap the oil boiler and that was removed years ago and it's just a hole really it's just it's got no floor in it it's got a dirt floor which is it's quite handy if you have a leak from your washing machine or there's an overflow from the the, the water heater because the water just runs and, and and drains down into the earth so so that's fine but it's it's a cupboard it's not a cupboard but it's a hole that stuff gets put into and then stuff gets in put in front of and you can't get to the stuff that's in there because there's all the stuff piled up in front of it I won't say who does that um so I talked to him about we need to sort that out and make it accessible make it so that we can put stuff away put stuff where you can reach it so he spent spent the day improving um, the um, the pallets that were on the on the, laying on the ground because it was quite uneven and evened up the front pallet so that you can walk in and walk out and then I just put stuff back in in, in order because I am the order person so that was a good job done. <clears throat> we're going to go. Um, I've had shopping delivered, but there were bits missing. Um, and I, so I had to change our plan for um, lunch because I was going to make, I'd ordered um, one of the pastry, ready-made pastry rolls and, was, and I'd ordered sausage meat. I was going to make a big long sausage roll and do it with some baked beans because I wouldn't do potatoes or anything with it anyway because of the carbs, but the, there'd be carbs in the pastry obviously. So, But the pastry wasn't in the order. Um, so I need that so I can use the sausage meat. Um, so I swapped and made the Cajun chicken and cheesy polenta, which we have probably once every couple of weeks because I like it. It's easy and it's really, really comforting to eat. So we had that instead. Um, so I, I've got some shopping to do. I want to make a Bakewell tart to take with me tomorrow. So I need some more ground almonds and I need raspberry jam and glacé cherries if I can find any and other bits and pieces so we're going to go and do that I can see that the um, winter jasmine is beginning to flower I'm going to turn you around there we go it's not a plant that I like it's pretty when it's in flower I just wish it I wish it was tidy <laughs> I don't like it because of all this, you know, all these big long fronds, I suppose you'd call them. I don't know whether it smells. I can't smell anything. I don't think it smells. And when I bought it, I thought I was buying jasmine. And um, I thought wrong. 
So these pansies were on the window ledge, but um, had to take them off so I could um, close the shutters. And um, this is all. This choisier is not advancing the way this one is. So the, the real flowers on this are out now. <clears throat> I was so surprised that nobody... I a couple of times I went, and the choice is doing well, and nobody picked up. <sighs> These paper flowers. <laughs> I really thought somebody would... That's not choicer. Choicer. Now, they, the white flowers on there are really quite scented, which is lovely. Um, oh, there are fish. Fish and kiwi leaves in there. I'm surprised because it was so cold. I'm not going to feed them because, you know, I should, um, they've been fed several times or, you know, they're, they're fed a lot during the weeks and the months, but I'm not going to feed them now because once they get too cold, they can't digest food. I don't think this Budley got the memo. It's such a, it's lovely and it's such a shame it is so late flowering. I don't know who that is. I think it might be magpies having an argument. Or it could be crows. Ludo <clears throat> if he will um, see if he can source some uh, more expatry chickens I worked out that the gold brahmas have stopped now for winter and the um, the new girls won't probably lie, lay for another 10 weeks maybe 8 to 10 weeks which means that we'll be at least another two months without eggs and I'm buying eggs and they're really poor quality compared to the eggs that we have here <clears throat> so he's not replied to me yet so I'm hoping that he'll sort me some chickens voila that's the update from here after a bit of a gap